Good afternoon, and welcome to the Bee Yard. The fall rains have finally started after a long, hot, and dry summer here in Michigan. And with the rains have come the fall flowers. The bees are busily at work taking advantage of summer's last hurrah. They seem almost frantic in their coming and going. They know there are only a few weeks left before settling in to a long Michigan winter. As things wind down in the bee yard, we now have more time to spend in the workshop tending to all of those long overdue projects. And that is a good thing, since time spent in the workshop is quality time. One project that a beekeeper should definitely put on their list is building their own beehive. It is not complicated. I can think of no better way to expand and extend your beekeeping journey than building your own equipment. Building your own beehive is easy on your budget and you will end up with first class stuff. In this series of videos we will show you how to build a beehive. From the hive stand at the bottom to the telescoping cover at the top and everything in between. It is a great winter project. So join us as we learn how to build a beehive in the beekeepers workshop. Today's project building the frames which are used to hold the wax foundation and upon which the bees draw their comb. In today's project, we will tackle the job of building frames. The frame is a rectangular piece of beekeeping equipment that sits inside the hive bodies. Each hive body contains multiple frames depending upon the width of the box you are using. Mounted inside the frame is a foundation, either wax or plastic, upon which the bees draw out the comb. If the bottom board, hive bodies, inner and top covers are the floor, walls, ceiling, and roof of the hive, then the frames are the furniture. It is on the drawn comb in the frames that the queen lays her eggs, the nurse bees raise the young, and the worker bees store the honey and nectar. The frames are movable and can be rearranged within the hive or taken out completely. A movable frame is the essence of the modern day beehive and makes possible the management of bees as we know it. All of this was a result of Langstroth in 1851 when he devised the Langstroth style beehive, the forerunner of the modern hive, which featured among other things the movable frame. Prior to Langstroth's insight, honeybee colonies were generally destroyed in order to harvest the honey. Needless to say, this was not good for the bees. With the movable frame, Beekeepers can remove just the frames of honey and leave the rest of the colony intact to live another day. In addition, the movable frames allow beekeepers to inspect the conditions inside a hive, deal with disease and other management challenges, and reuse the valuable comb by putting extracted frames back into the hive. Quite an achievement for such a simple device as the frame. The standard size frame is always 19 inches long. However, frames come in three different heights deep at 9 and 1 8 inches, medium at 6 and a quarter inches, and shallow at 5 and 3 8 inches. The size of the frame is determined by the height of the hive body you are using. Traditionally, deeps were used so the frames would be 9 and 8 inches high. There are a number of beekeepers who use the deep for the brood chamber and mediums for the honey super. So these folks need two sizes of frames. Recently, however, a lot of beekeepers, including me, are now strictly using mediums because there is less weight to deal with when lifting and toting a hive body and only one size of frame is needed to run the entire operation. Today, we will be building medium-sized frames. The downloadable plans for this project contain the dimensions for all of the different frame sizes. When making frames, you will not make just one. Hive bodies are designed to hold 5, 8, or 10 frames each. And of course you will have several hive bodies on a single hive. So making 20, 30, or 40, or even more frames at a time is not uncommon. We suggest that you first make a frame or two from beginning to end. You will gain valuable experience doing so. Once you understand what is going on and how everything comes together, you will then be able to set up your frame making operation and crank out a large number of frame components at a time. 
We'll expand on this notion a bit later. The frame probably takes the most abuse of any component in the beehive. During the life of a frame, it will be pried, twisted, scraped, spun, dropped, and generally banged up. Needless to say, the stronger the frame, the better it will serve both you and the bees. One way to achieve strong frame is to use only that portion of the lumber that is defect free and without any knots. Most of us will be working with number two grade pine lumber. Don't worry if your lumber has a few knots or other defects. You can simply work around these defects when cutting the board to the required lengths. Try to avoid lumber that is twisted, warped, cupped, or crooked. We typically will be able to use up to 90% of a board, perhaps even more. So waste is not a really an issue. Another way to achieve strong frames is to make accurate cuts and tight fitting joints. Of all the components in a beehive, the frame undoubtedly has the most demanding dimensions. In the plans that follow, many dimensions are specified down to a sixteenth of an inch and in some cases even one thirty-second of an inch. Throughout this video, we will have shop tips to help you to get to this level of accuracy. The tolerances I just mentioned are important, so we recommend that you make test cuts and scrap material and fine-tune the saw's setup. Take your time, be particular, and check your work frequently. We will be making frames out of both 1x lumber and 2x lumber. 1x lumber would be the common sizes such as a 1x4, a 1x6, or 1x8. 2x lumber would be the common sizes such as a 2x4, a 2x6, or a 2x8. In this video, we will be working with 1x6 and 2x6 boards. The reason for this is that we can cut a board to length, sometimes perform certain milling operations on the full width board, then rip the boards into a number of the frame components we are working on. This is a great time saver and helps eliminate waste. The width of the boards you work with is not particularly important. Generally, the wider lumber is more efficient and cost effective. If in doubt, start with 1x6 and 2x6 and see how it works for you. When building frames, you will be making a lot of fairly small parts and close cuts. Always think safety first. We strongly recommend that you have a pair of push sticks on hand and always use them when working with the table saw. In the downloadable plans for this project, we will provide a scale template from which you can make your own push sticks, or you can purchase a set commercially. We also make use of other shop aids, such as a tenon jig, and a taper jig. Other videos on our channel show you how to make these. Check out the references at the end of this video. In short, be smart, stay focused on your work, and be safe. Now let's get started in today's project. We will first make the sidebars, then move on to the top bar, then the bottom bar, and finally the tack strip. At the end, we will assemble all of these pieces together for the finished frame. There are two sidebars for each frame, and as the name implies, they hang down from the top bar and form the sides of the frame. The sidebar is 3 8 inch thick and ranges from 9 and an eighth to 5 and 3 eighths inches long. The top section is 1 and 3 eighths inches wide, then narrows down to 1 and an eighth inch on the lower section. Centered down the middle are a series of small holes, three or four depending upon overall height, that are used to pin wax foundation. These pin holes are not needed for plastic or duragilt foundation. At the top of the sidebar is a notch 7 8 inch wide and 7 16 inch deep that will slip into grooves on the top bar. The tabs on either side of this notch are a quarter inch wide. On the bottom of the sidebar is another notch that is three quarter inch wide, 3 8 inch deep and accepts the bottom bar. The tabs on the lower notch are 3 16 inch wide. We are going to make this, the sidebar, out of this, a 2 by 6. So how are we going to do that? Well, first we'll cut the 2 by 6 to the length of the sidebar. Then we will cut two notches or dados, one at the top and the other on the bottom of the 2 by 6. We will then rip the 2 by 6 into a number of sidebar blanks that are 3 8 of an inch thick. Trim the blank to width of the top section, trim the lower section to width, 
And finally, drill the pinholes. Six steps in all. Nothing to it. From a clear section of 2x6, cut a piece to the length of the sidebars. Since we are making medium sized frames, this length is 6 and a quarter inches. Be sure to cut enough blanks for the total number of frames you are making. Now let's turn our attention to making the top dado on the 2x6. A 2x6 is an inch and a half wide, but the sidebar is an eighth inch narrower at 1 and 3 eighths inches. We have to allow for this extra eighth inch when cutting our dado, and this is how we're going to do it. Here's a diagram showing the 2x6 and the profile of the sidebar. We could position the sidebar in the middle of the 2x, but that would mean we would have to trim 1 16th of an inch off of both sides. Two cuts will be required. What we are going to do instead is to position the profile against the right edge of the 2x. That way we only have to trim an eighth of an inch in a single step. Now let's take a closer look at the top to get the measurements we will need to cut the dado. The 2x is an inch and a half wide. We need a 7 8 inch dado that starts a quarter inch from the right side of the 2x and ends 3 8 7 inch from the other side. So we will make our first dado cut a quarter of an inch from the right side of the 2x blank. And we will make the second dado cut 3 8 of an inch from the left side of the blank. Then all we have to do is, remo is to remove the waist section in the middle. And we will end up with a 7 8 inch dado where we need it to be. The very first thing I do is mark a flat side of the 2x6. This will be the side with that extra eighth inch. Then set the dado for a 7 16th inch high cut. Drop a quarter inch drill bit against a tight fitting board in the saw's miter gauge slot. Then place your combo square snug against the drill bit and tighten the ruler against the saw's outer kerf. When the drill bit is removed, there is exactly a quarter inch between the end of the ruler and the blade. Next, Clamp the 2x to the tenon jig with the marked side facing in and slide the fence over until the 2x is tight against the end of the ruler. The edge of the 2x is now a quarter inch from the outside of the blade. And make that first dado cut. To make the second dado, do the same thing but this time use a 3 8 inch drill bit. Flip the board around so the marked side is now facing out and cut the second dado. Then remove any waste in between. I like to mark the dado we just made as you will need to know which dado is the sidebar top notch in later steps. The bottom notch is made much the same way as the top dado we just completed. Again, the 2x is an inch and a half wide. We are looking for a 3 quarter inch dado that starts 5 sixteenths of an inch from the right side and ends 7 sixteenths of an inch from the left side. So we will cut the first dado 5 sixteenths of an inch from the right side of the 2x6 blank. And then cut a second dado that starts 7 sixteenths of an inch from the left side of the blank. After that, we will remove the waste from the center and we'll end up with the 3 quarter inch dado we want. To make the bottom dado, lower the blade to 3 eighths of an inch. For the first dado cut, use a 5 sixteenth inch drill bit as the spacer. Be sure the marked side of the 2 by is facing the fence, position the fence, and make your first cut. The second dado is spaced using a 7 16th inch drill bit. Flip the 2 by around so that the marked side is facing out, position the fence, and make the second dado cut. Then remove the waste between the two dados. And now we have the two dados in the 2x6 exactly where we want them to be. We are now ready to rip the 2x6 workpiece into 3 8 inch wide rough blanks for the sidebars. This 3 8 inch thickness is rather important 
since the side bars will slip into a 3 inch groove on the top bar when the frame is assembled. It is somewhat of a shop bummer to have a stack of side bars that won't fit properly in the top bars. We want a snug fit of the sidebar in these grooves, so it, imp it is important that we cut the sidebar to the width of the right thickness. Here's a shop tip that will help. In a few minutes, we will make these top bar grooves with the dado blade stacked for a 3 8 inch wide cut. We can make a gauge in a scrap piece of 1 by. Just make a shallow dado using the dado blade set for 3 8 of an inch. We now have a simple gauge that we can use to test the thickness of the sidebar blanks. With a standard blade and the table saw, I have moved the fence 3 8 of an inch from the inside of the blade and raised the blade so that it will cut through the 2 by. Now it is just a matter of running the 2x6 workpiece through the saw, ripping off a 3 8 inch blank. Be sure to test the thickness of the first blank in the gauge. If everything looks good, then continue ripping the 2x6 into the sidebar blanks. As mentioned before, since we are using 2 by stock, the blanks will initially be 1 8 inch too wide on one side. In this step, we will trim the sidebar blank to a width of 1 and 3 8 inches. But before we do that, now is a good time to organize all of the blanks. If we trim on the wrong side, the blank will be trashed. This is where the reference marks we made earlier come in handy. Notice that the reference marks on the side and in the top notch are all lined up. Set the table saw fence 1 and 3 8 inches from the inside of the blade and cut each blank to this width. Make sure you are cutting the blank on the wide side, which is the side with the reference mark and that extra eighth inch we have been talking about. When completed, both tabs of the upper notch will be a quarter inch wide and both tabs on the bottom will be 5 sixteenths inch wide. In this step, we will trim the lower section of the sidebar to a width of 1 and 1 8 inches by removing a 1 8 inch strip from either side. Pay particular attention to the angled transition between the lower and upper sections of the sidebar. For this job, the bandsaw is the answer. I have set the fence exactly 1 8 inch from the outside of the blade. The lower section is 3 and 5 eighths of an inch, including that angled transition. Allowing 1 8 inch for this transition, I am installing a stop 3 half inches from the front of the bandsaw's blade. With the bandsaw properly set, we can make the cut on one side of the workpiece, and then flip it over and make the same cut on the other side. Those lower tabs are 3 16 of an inch wide, not much room for error here. And of course, we repeat the same operation on all of the other sidebar blanks we have. Finally, to make the flared transition to the top section, we again use the bandsaw and just eyeball the 45 degree cut. The next step is to drill the pin or eyelet holes used when installing wax foundation. If you are using plastic or duragilt foundation, you may skip this step. The holes are centered vertically on the sidebar. The number of pinholes is up to you. I use four for deeps, three for mediums, and two for shallow frames. Mark out the locations in the sidebar and drill the holes. After you drill the first sidebar, you can use it as a template to mark out the drill locations in all of the other sidebars. This will save a lot of time. We are using a 764 inch diameter drill bit, but your pins or eyelets may need a different diameter. Use whatever works for you. Finally, it is time to clean up any rough edges. A drum sander attached to a drill press makes short work of this step, but hand sanding works too. When sanding, inspect each sidebar. Reject any that don't fit the spec. If you are like me, there will undoubtedly be a few. Well, we have probably done enough and it is a good time to take a break and call it a day. Tomorrow we will finish this project by making the top and bottom bar and then assembling all of the parts. So I hope you can join me again as we complete making the frame in the Beekeeper's Workshop.